Okay, there should be audio for you right now, Carlin, and I've got the recording set up. We're getting underway. Um, just a quick uh, note. Welcome. <laughs> My name is Jeff Gibby. I'm going to be running the class today. Really appreciate you guys coming. We have a great uh, turnout, uh, which isn't surprising, but uh, looks like we uh, we're kinda, we have pretty close to a full house. Um, if you have questions during the please let me know that you can hear me. At least uh, go ahead and just type that in. <laughs> that would be nice. Uh, it's always nice to not do 10 minutes of this and then realize nobody can hear what you're saying. So um, anyway, welcome to the room tonight. It's uh, some exciting things going on here at Metastock and it's busy. And uh, But it's always good to kind of sit down and do a class. And uh, today's speaker is a great one. Um, so let's go ahead and get to it. Today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the accompanying software plugins. And it is not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. I think that's 352 times I've read that out loud, so I've got it pretty good and well memorized right now. Um, I want to welcome you to the class. We have a very good class today. Um, Tony, uh, I know a lot of you are already familiar with Tony and the uh, Tony Turner and in the market, and obviously she's a very accomplished technical analysis. She's almost one of those that goes without introduction. Um, but Tony uh, and I have, have talked to each other for, I think, a number of years now. And um, she's just, uh, in addition to being a very established technician, is really a great person. I enjoy working with her. She's always fun to talk to. And um, uh, one of my favorite people to talk to on the phone uh, right now. So uh, I want to bring her on. Uh, I'm very interested to see what she has to say. She's going to be talking about support and resistance. She's got a new course that's available um, around support and resistance. And so let's go ahead and let her uh, take over the stage. She's going to share her screens with you. And then I'm going to kind of show you a few things that come along. After she's done, I'm going to show you a few things that come along with the course that are built into Metastock and stuff that we've built for her that are available to you as well. So with that being said, Tony, let's bring you in here. Hey, Jeff. Thank you so much. Uh, if you want to stop sharing your screen, then thank you. I will share mine. Hi, everybody, and welcome. It's really good to be with you all today. Now, uh, can you all please let me know, can you see my PowerPoint, how support and resistance can increase your trading grains. Oh, good. Okay, fantastic. Well, great. And thank you so much, Jeff. I have to tell everyone that Jeff, too, is one of my favorite people. <laughs> so <laughs> we have what, what did my mother used to call it? The Mutual Admiration Society going here. Anyway, uh, Metastock is a fantastic product. I used it. Uh, for my last book, Invest to Win, uh, which I co-authored with my partner, Gordon Scott. And I, I really enjoyed using Metastock, and I'm looking forward to all of the great things that they keep adding to it. Now, let's turn today to a the very fundamental, the building blocks, what makes, how we can identify uh, points on our charts that give us the most successful trades. And of course, you know that I'm going to say those levels, those points are support and resistance. We're going to look today as to how they can increase our trading gains. Now, unlike Jeff, I'm not going to be good enough to read this to you. This is our disclaimer slide, and I'm going to count to three. And then I'm going to assume that you have read this slide. One, two, three. Everybody got it? Great. Thanks. Okay. I've got a lot to cover today, so I want to get going here. 
first of all, we're going to talk about how, again, how support and resistance can increase your profits, learning to identify it. What does it mean? And maybe you're not only looking at price support and resistance, maybe you're adding on to that. Maybe you're using trend lines. Maybe you're using moving averages. Maybe you're even going into GAN lines or Bollinger Bands or Fibonacci lines. Uh, Fibonacci retracements. I want to tell you something really quick because it's kind of fundamental to everything that I've learned to do in the last 20 years. Uh, the usual story of traders who really dive in and get immersed is that, and, and this happened to me and it happened to every one of my friends, it's happened to all my students, it seems to be the pathway we take. And that pathway is we get into trading or even active investing with the idea that we're going to, our expectation is, oh boy, I just have to learn a little bit and then I'm going to make a gazillion dollars. Uh, then we get into the market and we find out that the market has a mind of our own and that we have to deal with that. So maybe we even get in like I did. My first two trades uh, made one made two points or two dollars a share and the other one made seven dollars a share within like the first two days so i couldn't understand why everybody was warning me against this trading thing i thought this is a walk in the park uh, right after those first two trades way back in the 90s that's actually about the last thing i remembered for about a year and a half because then the market slapped me around and 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 I lived through the, from the initial euphoria, somehow I, I got myself through, as you all read my books, you know, I got myself through the next year and a half or so. Uh, then I locked down and during that year and a half and going forward, then I really learned about the market. A lot of it, I let the market teach me how to trade at the end of that unfortunate period I started training with professionals. I started, I fortunately found mentors in New York. Uh, what you do in the beginning is once you learn about indicators, you start putting a lot of them on your charts after you get into it. And then, and then if you live through the first year and a half or two, then you go looking and you know something by now, you look for the holy grail. And after you find out there's no such thing as the holy grail, then you start simplifying. Then you start taking things off your indicators off your charts because maybe you've got analysis paralysis where there's so many things on your charts that you, you can't even tell what you're looking at. So that's kind of the road I traveled and that most people travel. So you're going to find my charts pretty simple. You're going to find my ideas pretty simple because that is quite simply how I make money. I've gone from... from euphoria to oh my gosh and study to a million charts in the whole or a million indicators in the holy grail and then start pulling them back off and go back to simple my ideas are simple that's how i make money now let's look at support and resistance here where's there's my cursor i was looking for that Learning to identify support and resistance on price charts, and that's what I use the most, support and resistance, buyers and sellers, where they're showing up on the charts by learning to identify those points. Learning to identify support and resistance on price ch charts, quite honestly, increases your trading and your investing profits. Do we still have double voices here? I don't quite know what to do about that. Sometimes if you have poor sound, you can, uh, if you're signed in twice, Jackie Gillette, you're going to have that, okay? And it looks like, are you, are you, if you're signed in twice, you might, okay, you might want to log off and lock back on. I found that works. Okay, all right. Back to support and resistance, pinpointing support and resistance will help you identify trade entries, exit, and provide risk management. And that's really all there is, guys. That's really all there is. We enter, we establish our protective stop, we look for our price target, our profit target, and 
we manage our risk until we get out of the trade. That's it. And all of that can be done using support and resistance. I am a, I like to go bottom fishing. So this knowledge, being able to spot really firm bases, price bases, and the characteristics that they have allow me to buy low and sell high. Now, our tip, typically what we do, and I keep losing my cursor, there it is. Typically, well, for goodness sakes, what we do is if, if price is moving like this, we buy above, just above, price a price floor or support. What is support? It's more buyers than sellers. It's enthusiasm. It's optimism. It's do downright greed. So we want to buy where we know that there is support, where there are buyers. We sell or manage risk when price mo moves into a firm price ceiling. What is that? It could be a... a a trend line coming overhead. It could be prior resistance because price traded there before. And, and we say, okay, all these guys over here who, who bought, who, 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 when, the, when the stock went to $50, they may not even be able to know, read charts, but they know that the last time it got to $50 up here, then it fell like a stone off a cliff. So the next time it gets to $50, they say, gosh, the last time I this stock uh, got to $50, it fell like a stone off a cliff. So that at that point, maybe they sell. There's other reasons for selling, but that's what we call price resistance. Maybe we want to take some off the our position there. Maybe we want to take it all off, or maybe we want to hold it and look for another place to enter. As long as we have a plan, we'll be okay. We just have to have a plan, and support and resistance helps us put that plan in place. Now, we can also sell if we own a stock and it comes up and it falls below a prior support level. Here's pr price support here. And we say, never mind, we've got a good profit in this. We bought it way back there, and we're going to take it because it fell through support. Because buyers who were there before put their hand in their pockets and said, we're not buying any more stock here right now. More sellers than buyers, price falls down. Okay, let's look at some charts here. I'm going to start off. Uh, we're not going to take up much of your time tonight, but I'm going to start off with a weekly chart of Facebook. I thought it was apropos since Facebook earnings, Facebook's earnings came out tonight. Uh, while they had very, very good earnings, uh, uh, the last time I looked, uh, price was down. It was down about a point. Uh, this chart was captured last night, so it's not. It's off by a few cents. At any rate. Uh, we're looking at a weekly chart. I never get into a trade unless I look at a weekly chart. Usually my progress goes from scanning daily charts, and we'll look at that in a minute, scanning daily charts. I go, hmm, that looks pretty good if I see something I like. Then I'll back up to a bigger picture, to a weekly or even a monthly chart. That is because on a daily chart, you may sometimes say, oh, gee, the last six months, this stock's in an uptrend, when if you backed up and looked at a weekly or monthly chart, you would see that the uptrend is simply a rally in the context of a bigger downtrend. That happens. Uh, if we, you can flip very quickly on Metastock from, from daily to weekly to monthly to intraday, any, 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 uh, any um, uh, intraday periods that you want, and you can customize it, of course. So with Metastock, I just flip, 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 back and forth, back and forth, or I arrange my charts on my page so I can see simultaneously daily, weekly, or monthly, and intraday. So that works out well. If we look at this weekly chart, and this goes way back to when Facebook came out as an IPO, whoops, right back there, right in the summer of 2012. We know that Facebook came out at about $40 on the IPO. Over the next few months, it fell, cut that in half down to right around 20, I'm going to say. 
and then start it up. Now, what I find attractive about this chart, even though it was one heck of a long wait, doggone near a year that it fooled around, it found support here in August, September, October, November, that end of the third quarter into the fourth quarter. What is support? It means that every time the price starts to move down, buyers come in and hold it up. That is support. That's all there is to it. Then you can see that Facebook in this base over here broke above resistance. Resistance is the top of that base. What does it mean? It says people are willing to pay more for Facebook right now. Even though it fell like a stone early on, they're willing to pay more. They're willing to pay more. Little pullbacks, little pullback. This is called a base on a base. When a stock consolidates, breaks up above resistance, and then consolidates on top of the prior base, a base on a base. I do like the 30-week moving average on weekly charts, and I put this up, and I said, oh, good, Facebook likes that. Uh, many times you'll find that a stock, a stock, a price pattern will like certain moving averages. The 30-day moving average is one. So you can see that it broke out above, held support, broke out above resistance, above 30-week moving average, and then started a series of uptrends, higher lows and higher highs. Now I want you to look at something here and remember this for any time you're looking. And again, we're going to go back to simple, but in the heat of trading battles, simple is what you're going to want to remember. Walking, a moving average, when it's trending higher, acts as picture a staircase in your mind because you're going you're gonna to look at something here and you're going to analyze it. I didn't, um, I just bought a very small amount, Jim, and left it there, put a stop under it and checked it every, I don't know, every few days. But I had a, I have an, I had a stop with my broker. I'm not going to sit and watch it. But I, ha I have a, in a, uh, watch list up of my positions too. So one glance tells me about what I need to know. Think of a moving average like a staircase, okay? The moving average, in this case the 30 week, is moving higher. It's a staircase. Price is your legs, okay? Price is your legs. Your legs at the beginning of the staircase, when you're starting up a staircase that's rising, you have lots of energy in your legs and your legs and your knees are moving up high, and you're running up the stairs, and you have lots and lots of energy. At some point, however, you start saying, wow, the staircase is pretty steep, and then you have to put your foot all the way back down, and maybe when you down to the staircase, the rising moving average, Maybe you're a little out of breath here, and then when you start back up, your steps start getting smaller. Your knee doesn't pull up as high on each leg. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm starting to gasp for air. So now you're coming down on the steps without lifting your leg so high. And that continues. And the stairs keep going at their own pace. But you start to get where you can't lift your leg anymore. And at some point, you're going to have to sit down and rest. Rising moving averages correlated with price, the same thing happens. In the beginning of a, of, a, of a dandy uptrend on a weekly or monthly, even daily chart, price will move up. Yay, yay, yay. Especially a momentum stock, a Momo stock everybody's talking about. It may move up dramatically, but when you see it start to hug this moving average and get closer and closer to it because the price is getting tired and it's getting heavy, then you know that potentially maybe you want to raise your stops, take some profits off the table, or know that there may be a pullback of some kind uh, coming up. Maybe not bad, but you want to know what's support here, the rising day, 30-day moving average. What's down here? This is the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence oscillator. Kind of funny here, isn't it? that the MACD is making what we call a bearish divergence, meaning the Facebook's making a higher high here from, from, from look left on the chart, 
MACD says, you know what? I'm not impressed. And the MACD, the black line is the MACD line starts down. It falls below the red signal line and says, nope, I got to rest. So while Facebook's going up and it's a long ways, and I'm not saying that when you see a bearish divergent, you sell your stock. I'm saying you put a note at your elbow and say, in the next few months, Facebook is getting tired. And I think what I'm going to do, maybe I'm going to trail a stop for all or part of my position under the 30-day moving average. Maybe you're going to draw a line for price support here and say, if it drops decisively below that, maybe I'm going to take profits. Why? Because you know how to read support and resistance. You can see it's not making higher highs here, and maybe it's a little tuckered out. Let's look at our daily chart. Okay, now let's look back here real quick. Right from May, right here, from May to the hard red right edge of this chart, look at that price pattern in here because that's what we're going to drill down to next. See from May, right where I put this line, forward. Okay, got it? Very mild uptrend. Okay, let's go. This is a, we drill down now from May on this daily chart of Facebook to the price action to current time, to uh, actually to today. So we now on this chart, we have the 20-day moving average, simple in red, the 50-day moving average, simple in green, 200-day in black. Those are some of the major moving averages I use on my charts. Uh, it's one, one set of them that, that I like. So now we can see when we drill down and take a close up of that weekly chart, now we can even see more clearly that at the current time anyway, Facebook is getting a little tired. Now we can see that it consolidated in May and we know that it broke out beautifully and headed higher. And we can see that every time it walked up the 20-day, fell to the 50. Now know this, when big momentum stocks or Dow stocks, uh, strong ones in an uptrend, fall to the 50-day moving average, many times uh, portfolio managers and the institutional money will buy. So it doesn't mean if it hits the 50-day, you buy it. But it does mean that you can watch it for a bounce. And if it stays above it like Facebook did, Maybe when it moves over the high of the low day, maybe it's something you want to get into it after you research it. In this case, Facebook popped up over its 50-day. That could have been earnings. Uh, right through August and September, bounced down a little bit in September, and then something happened that nobody expected, and everybody in October took a fall. Why did everybody take a fall in October? Anybody remember? Facebook didn't get as, hit as hard as, that's right, Al, exactly, Ebola. Facebook didn't get hit as hard as the airlines, for example, uh, <clears throat> because, because of obvious reasons. But it, it got hit for a few days. A lot of the other stocks, a lot of other stocks went down a lot harder because that's it's nasty. This is Ebola. Then it turns around because it's earnings season, pops back up above its 50-day. This fall here may have taken some people out because the 50-day is starting to level off. The 20-day is coming down overhead. Earnings season, pop up, anticipation, excitement, boom, and Facebook falls down on its earnings report in October. Something else that's happening here is interesting. And again, you can't put it, you can't sell your stock because of it, but the 14-day RSI is falling while Facebook is rising. So you put that at your, maybe at your elbow. And you watch how the 20 and 50 day moving averages come together and you watch this high up here after it's created and the fact that it can't stay above it and we're looking at our legs or facebook's legs on these stairs and it's saying it fell hard on ebola moving into november fifth moving averages are support or resistance once price falls below them then they can be resistance especially the green line the 50 day so once 
Facebook fell below it on earnings, it couldn't get above it. And maybe you now you know that about support and resistance, and probably you knew it before. But one thing you need to do is get up from your screen, walk away from it, turn around and look at it from about 10 feet behind your chair, and then you can see and maybe get a bigger picture here that for this very right, 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 um, for this moment in time, Facebook's feet or legs are getting pretty heavy. Now, it may have the strength here to fall, I mean, excuse me, to rise, to move above. We're watching a 200-day a moving average here continue to rise. That's the long-term moving average. Why do we care about 200-day moving averages? Because there's a, from 240 to 250 trading days in the year. And if price is trading above the 200-day moving average, then it is positive. But notice with me how Facebook is getting closer and closer to that moving average, far closer than it was back last summer. It's getting closer because its legs are getting heavier, okay? Now, with this last move up here in December, what was, anybody know what this move up here was, this big wahoo move up over the 50-day moving average? in the middle of December? Take a guess. Okay, if you were a portfolio manager the end of this year and Facebook has been such a winner up 40 percent in the year 2014, you better darn well run over and grab a whole bunch of shares of Facebook so it looks like you had it in your portfolio all year. Okay, <laughs> everybody, you don't want people writing in saying, hey, hey, how come I don't have Facebook uh, in my realign your portfolio? So to me, I wouldn't do this. Facebook's up 40% in 2014. Facebook is, is, is a fantastic company and, and will now, no doubt go much higher in the future that at the moment in time, Facebook is letting, looking Techno technically is looking tired. It looks like its legs are getting heavy. I will wait for a pullback, and then if I decide I want it, maybe. Uh, and, and, and so we will see what happens. But if you learn to read support and resistance, remember that moving averages are magnets. Remember that going up a staircase at some time your legs get tired. So too does price get tired and head down toward its moving average, moving average flattens out. And you say, oh, but Tony, Facebook is a great stock. It's going to go up forever. I have one word for going up forever. Well, nope is one. Our markets move in cycles. Well, gravity too, for sure, Kelly. <laughs> yep, 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 Apple. Um, Markets move in cycles. They move, uh, actually, they front run the business cycle. Stock market front runs the business cycle. And all stocks move in cycles. Nothing goes up forever. What goes up will come down. Don't know when doesn't mean you have to sell it. But please have a plan. Please have a plan. Okay? And when something looks really heavy to me, I may raise my stop. I may take some profits. I know about support and resistance, and that is why, um, and, and the different ways to use it, and, and, and how to even team it up with the 14-day RSI, the MACD, which is now right at or under the zero line for Facebook. And, and since I know those things, I can take profits and not ride anything down to a loss, which I think is what almost everybody would like. Now, for my last, one of my, one of my last charts here, just about my last chart, I'm going to show you how a real simple method for day trading. A real simple method for day trading. Uh, if anybody has 42 indicators on their charts to day trade like I used to have, certainly we all have our favorite indicators and there's nothing wrong with them. 
Uh, I just like to, the longer I trade, the simpler I want it to be, simply because I make more money. Uh, now, this, this setup is explained uh, in more depth in, in the webinar that I'll tell you about in a minute that I did uh, in partnership with Metastock. But I will just show you real quickly, if you have a stock, where'd my cursor go again? There it is. If you have a stock that's moving in an uptrend um, and on a daily chart, you want to use the daily chart as your primary trend, especially for day trading. If it's moving in an uptrend, if it comes down to support maybe the 50-day moving average and then starts up, or maybe it's price support, and you can maybe use the three, two, three to five days of that swing, price swing higher to, and of course you don't know it's going to be that when you start out, but you, if it, a strong stock like Facebook in a strong market with the, with the uh, NASDAQ going up, uh, you can uh, day trade it. And I use a very simple setup that, that uh, Jeff's going to talk to you about in a minute because Metastock partnered with me on it. I simply use on a 15-minute chart, it also works. This moving average combination works on any intraday time frame that you like. Uh, and it is very, very simply the eight-period exponential moving average. In this case, it's red on this chart. And the 18-period simple moving average. I use it on 15-minute charts, again, 5-minute charts, 60-minute charts. Any intraday you can think of, it works well. And I simply use the crossovers on it. If, the, if, if when price comes, you can see price coming down here on the far left. Actually, it was uh, the 15th of January. Facebook came down. You'll see it in a bigger picture on the daily chart. Trading below, it's 8 period exponential below its 18 period then on the 16th the morning of the 16th it's the 8 crosses above the 18 the red crosses above the blue and facebook excuse me facebook's price walks right up that 8 period exponential it walks right up it now if you're day trading you sell at the end of the day so here you went from I'm not I'm looking at this kind of ballpark, about $74 to about, maybe you made a point. This was a pretty wild, uh, pretty shallow move uh, on, in the next, and, and you sold at the end of the day if you're an intraday trader. The next morning it was still riding that, but I want a crossover, so I wait. I get a crossover later in the morning. I don't really love trading in the afternoon, but since it pulled back and since I'm watching the QQQs with Facebook, along with for guidance then I can see Facebook rises up and moves walks right up it's eight period exponential and it does that several times until it starts getting tired now notice that when it moves up its legs are getting tired it falls below the moving average you can still get a little more out here also notice the trend line I drew also like a staircase and notice that instead of the big moves up, woohoo, then they start getting shallower and shallower and more shallow because Facebook's getting tired, and this is typical. Uh, I do many times, Jim. Yes, you're exactly right. I scan from the daily chart and go to the 15-minute. What am I looking at here? I know that on my daily chart, Facebook has prior resistance on my daily chart from December 12th and January 9th right here at about $78.50. So am I surprised when it gets up to that point? And the remember I told you before, the sellers come in and say, hey, last time it got up here, it fell down. Well, I know this. So even though I can't see it on this chart, I know this resistance is here. I see Facebook's price can't come up. It's hugging. It's hugging the trend line that I started and drew between two points down here and then just simply extended all the way up. It fell below it. It's getting tired. I know there's resistance here. I'm gone for day trading. I'm going to go find something else until Facebook recovers. All because I know how to read support and resistance. All because I know how to read support and resistance. Now, my last chart today, I wasn't going to include, but when I looked at what happened in the market today, 
I wanted to do it. Uh, I wanted to include it. So you all have an idea here of, um, of just about major, major support and resistance. This is a daily chart of the S&P 500 spider, the SPY. Now, when we talk about the market, and you say, well, what is the market? Is it the Dow? Is it the S&P? Is it the NASDAQ? Generally, we can use the S&P 500 spider uh, S symbol SPY. Everybody can get that. It's not a futures contract. Uh, everybody can get that. And, and, and of course, it's the top five, uh, 500 uh, companies by publicly traded companies by market capitalization in our U.S. stock market. So what I wanted to show you today is look at all the times recently that the, that the SPY has closed on the low of the day, okay? We've got a top here at about 200 and, uh, 208 and change back in December. Of course, this was the Ebola thing. Uh, it came down to prior, in, in December, it came down to prior support. You can see where I drew a almost, not quite, horizontal trend line here to connect what was resistance here right back here became support here because that's what happens to support and resistance and I explain all that it moves up to its all-time highs in December falls if you guys remember in the first couple of weeks of December and we're like hey where's the Santa rally uh, fell just below the 50-day, didn't stay there, rallied quickly, gapped up. This, this was the day that Janet Yellen and the Fed met in December and said, hey, guess what? We're going to leave interest rates low. That was support. That was people saying, okay, we'll buy now because we were worried about that. It moved back up, couldn't make a higher high or did just by a few cents. Now we have more days here of price closing on its lows. Price closing on its lows. It's come back down to this 199 uh, price zone, touched it, moved up, and made a lower high. Made a lower high and closed on the lows of the day. So these big red candles that we've seen now for about the last two months, uh, I, I'm going to say that they're important. And I'm not saying the market's going to sell off, and I'm not saying that the world's going to come to an end because I don't believe that. But I do believe that we're getting a little tired here, at least in the short term. Now, there's nothing I would like better for this market to rally and move up. We've had some good, strong earnings reports, but everybody has to rest, and, and, and markets move in cycles. So... If it, if what I'm saying to you here is support and resistance, making lower highs, this support level here of 199 to 198, which is 1990 and 1980 on the S&P 500, we also have a rising 200-day moving average. All of these points I'm telling you about are potential support. These numbers here from 197 to 199. All where potential buyers are. Potential buyers, potential buyers, potential buyers, okay? If the potential buyers put their hands behind their back and say, no way, I'm going to rest for a while, I'm taking some stuff off the table here, I made 40% this year on Facebook, I'm good. If that happens, then we have to look for a drop that may run down into 1920 or 1910 even want 1900 which wouldn't be the end of the world, but I just want you all to know that it's possible because the price of oil is falling pretty far here. I watch hundreds of internals on my screen all day, and uh, I'm showing you how to read support and resistance and how it can benefit you. Now, every stock in the universe isn't going to go down if the S&P sells off a tiny bit here. Biotechs wander around on their own. Of course, they're very risky. Uh, but but there are a lot of indicators on Metastock besides support and resistance, the simple ones I'm showing you, that you can drag and drop, and that's one cool thing about Metastock. It's so simple, and I sure like simple. 
that you can put on here, just remember that so price is the last word and learning how to read support and resistance is absolutely key. Now, as I come into the end here, Tom says this is an interesting presentation. I appreciate that. Parallels what he does in the futures. He trades the ES, that's the S&P 500 E-mini futures. Use price action and moving averages to identify buying and selling areas. Very cool. Use a tick chart to time the pullbacks to reduce my risk. That's smart and take the trades. Uh, my issue is the stuff between your ears. I totally get that, Tom. That is all of our, I'm going to say 99% of us can say that our issue is the stuff, <laughs> the 19, it's the 18 inches between our head and our heart that gets in the way, okay? Our 18 inches between our head and our heart when we go, oh no, oh gosh, oh no, please tell me no. The stock's going down. That's why we have support. So what do we do? We're trading the S&P 500. We put our stop underneath major support, underneath the 200-day moving average. And then we go out and wash the dog or the car or go have lunch with a friend and get the heck away from our computers. So if, if, if uh, one of the Metastock vendors has to take us out, uh, we're okay with that. Uh, the blue line, well, let me delete these real quick. The blue line is simply me. I take Metastock trend line, just the, the regular one, and I start here, and then I start drawing it backwards. You can start the other way if you want, and I say, because I can look, you can look at this chart, Ben, and you can say, okay, I see where price touches a bunch of times here. So I take my trend line and I go left and I go left because I can see right almost four places it touches, making it very strong. Okay, so I drag the trend line back and then I just follow it. I just pull it back in the direction it's going and extend it. It'll, it's easy to do. It's not so easy with this red line that with Metastock it's easy. I extend it back and go, oh my gosh, look at what was resistance here is now support. So that's more support for my story. More support, more support, more support. So what I'm saying is this, and, and, and look guys, support and resistance with these trend lines is like a tennis, a tennis net on a tennis court, okay? It's a very definite boundary between you and your opponent and the ball going back and forth. But if you were to walk up to that net on the tennis court and push it a little bit, it has a little bit of give, okay? It has a little bit of give. So too, does the support and resistance have a little bit of give? So we can give it like two points here, and it slants down ever so slightly, but I want to see what it's sitting on, and I can see that I have potential support here all over the place. It's going to make it doubly important if all these people that bought here and that bought here and that bought here and the bot here, and the bot here, if all these people, I'm going to say most of them, put their hands in their pockets if the SPY falls lower, that's a lot of people. If it falls lower, they may let it fall. So I just, I'm not going to panic. The stuff between my ears is going to say, wow, I'm glad I know this, and I'm glad I have a plan. So maybe, you know, I'm okay with taking some profits, or at least lowering my, my, um, lowering my stop, okay? And that this is what you know with support and resistance. This is what you know. Okay. All right. Uh, now we better keep going here. We're going to, Jeff's going to get the hook. All right. Uh, I will tell you in a shameless plug here very quickly that I have a brand new webinar on the market called that I've gotten lots of good reports about called How to Profit using support and resistance. I made it in conjunction with Metastock. You all, if you look at this, uh, and there's a link below, and I think Jeff has a link, and you get some really, really cool stuff from Metastock, which is worth the price because it's not very expensive. Discover how to identify support and resistance levels to produce profitable trades. This is very good for beginners and for intermediate traders. 
it, it, it maybe will show you some things that you hadn't thought about in a long time. And again, in the heat of battle, when you're entering a trade or even an active investment, there's nothing like remembering the basics to keep you in the right place. The link's at the bottom of the page here, G. Uh, all right, right there. I know it's kind of long, um, but I'm leaving it up here for a second, and Jeff has it as well. Also, you're going to team up support and resistance. This goes, this webinar goes from the basics to a little more sophisticated stuff. And you can, of course, once it's in your account, it'll be on our website. It'll be there for a long, long time. Uh, team it up. Learn how to team up price support and resistance with moving averages and momentum indicator signals to increase your gains. Oh, Jeff put it right there for you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Kelly is really Jeff. Okay. You can use my ICE technique to make consistently winning trades. You can discover my six-point checklist that will help you make it. You'll make up this checklist. Maybe you'll run off copies or you'll keep it on your desktop. However you want to do it, that helps you. This is what I use, guys. This is all the stuff I use every day. Discover my six-point checklist to minimize your losses and maximize your profits. Remember, it's not how much money you make, it's how much money you don't lose that makes you a successful trader. Your free bonus, which Jeff is going to explain to you in a minute, is one month of Metastock. And it's also got scans in it he's going to talk to you about that I use. So that makes it doubly important. There is the link. And... Uh, Jeff just put it on the um, in the chat box for you. So I really want to thank you all very much for coming today. Uh, I appreciate seeing all of you here, and I know you're here again from all over the world, and I certainly do welcome you. Uh, trading and investing is not the hardest thing in creation, as long as you know the basics, as long as you know the basics and how to apply it. You can build on those basics. Don't get yourself into a place where you shouldn't be. Use the basic knowledge you have. Keep it very, very simple. Build on it. And for now, I'm going to say thank you for coming. Keep green on your screen. I'm Tony Turner, and here's Jeff. Hey, that was great. I do want to just spend a couple minutes because we spent a lot of time with Tony uh, to kind of make it so that people that go through the course have a very easy learning process across the board and uh, that was great Tony I just was texting my marketing guy saying let's get this on YouTube she's doing a great job so um, anyway so let me go ahead and if I can ask you to stop share actually I can just kick you off like that <laughs> should now be able to see that screen let me go ahead and uh, do a slideshow here I, uh, actually I'm just gonna go straight into Metastock I'm going to talk a little bit about kind of the design of what we actually included. And we lean on a couple of things that Tony talks about in her course. And we also lean on a, a few of the things that are involved that you may not know about in Metastock. And within just about 10 or 15 minutes, I'm just going to show you a few things that I think are important. Number one, what we did, I'm looking at Dow here, is we went in and recreated templates for the different views that Tony likes to use in her course. So if I right click here and you, you install her templates that come with the course, um, you're going to have uh, Tony Turner. And you'll have uh, Tony Turner daily with automatic support and resistance levels. And those use a few things that are actually pretty cool. I'm going to show you those. We've got uh, daily without the automatic support and resistance levels. And we've got kind of different versions of the template. Now, the support and resistance levels that we're using here, are, I will say, are not Tony's. But we had Tony look at them. And they're stuff that we've had in Metastock for a while. And uh, they're pretty cool. So if you like them and if you kind of like what they're spitting out, Go ahead and use them. If you don't like them, well, that's fine. Just use the ones that don't include the automatic support and resistance levels. I'm going to show it to you with the support and resistance levels here. I'm going to go ahead and click on OK there. Oh, well, that's not exactly what I meant to do, but let's go ahead and do it a different way. We're doing some testing in my, my Metastock's not working exactly the way it's a little bit of a beta version I'll just say it that way um, I'm gonna go ahead and open that up again again it's under Tony Turner 
So from your PowerPoint console, you'll be able to kind of go in and pick the automatic support and resistance level. And, oh, yeah, okay. That may not work. Let me try a different template. Again, I've been doing a beta test of another version, and I think I'm running into some issues. As you know, we're always, we wear a lot of hats around Metastock. And I'm going to show you without the automatic support and resistance levels. We'll see if that works. Go ahead and open that up. I'm sure your version will work. It's just that I've kind of imported into a newer version of Metastock a lot of the things that are in here. So actually, it was the support and resistance levels that are giving me a problem. So initially, what you're going to get with all of these templates is you're going to have like the way she likes to look at charts, her MACDs, her RSIs, her moving averages. Uh, when you install the actual file, you'll actually also have automatic support and resistance levels that will actually plot on the chart here. I'm going to actually go ahead and try and show you those. Uh, we'll see if it works. I didn't expect to not be able to do the, uh, that particular part of it, but if it doesn't work, you'll, I'll just tell you that it's awesome and you can play with it yourself. The resistance levels, see, in Metastock, we've got automatic long-term resistance levels and automatic short-term resistance levels. So I'm going to go ahead and plot that on the chart and cross my fingers. And, oh, I think that's the issue. Let's try a daily chart. And you'll see that it's just plotting out that support and resistance level. So with the Tony's templates that have them, we automatically have the support and resistance levels on there. We automatically have the triangles that are on there and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to actually, I think that was kind of what was giving me the issue was that the, the time frame I was looking at. So let's try it one more time. And if not, I'm just going to give up and apologize. Aha, and there it works. So you'll see that this looks actually kind of a lot nicer. We have the support and resistance levels that are drawn on here. If you like these, go ahead and use them. If you don't like them as much, just don't use them. Um, they're not actually based on any mathematics that Tony Turner does. It's just the calculations in the software to determine support and resistance in there. Um, and then you've seen the view of the other template. We also kind of looked at the course to say, well, how can we make selection of things easier for and we developed a couple of scans around that. For those of you, I know 50% of you set in the audience said scans weren't available. Uh, you didn't have Metastock. So a market scan is just our ability to go in and say, okay, well, we want to find a stock that meets a certain criteria in Metastock. And so we actually created a couple of scans that come as part of it. One of them will allow you to scan for stocks that are really far away from the distance uh, for the moving averages, which act as support. Um, and so you can run that scan. Uh, in addition to that, we look for stocks that have crossed through their moving averages. Uh, in addition to that, if you're looking for stocks that have just penetrated through a support or a resistance level, in Metastock, there's a dynamic tool, VT. And VT, VT, right here. And you can actually do scans. It'll actually list out stocks that have breached through support or resistance or have had a trend line breakout. And those will be very, very interesting to you as well. I did set down um, uh, as part of the course and actually created a section of video that walk you through how to use those tools. So when you buy the course, we're going to show you exactly how to implement them inside of Metastock. And trust me, it'll be a lot easier. It's just the fact that I've been running some test scenarios today that are giving me issues. <laughs> so it's a, it's a personal problem. It won't affect you guys when you're actually playing with it. And yeah, we are always kind of working on the software and uh, sometimes that, that, a little bit problematic. I tried to roll back, but I just didn't have the time. I want to kind of talk a little bit about Tony's course. If you guys didn't guess, I really do. Uh, let me go ahead and put this on the primary monitor so you can see it. And so this just talks a little bit about what's included with the templates. And it's a really a bonus. You know, this is going to help you apply the methodologies that are in there. It's a bonus to what you're doing. What the thing that I like about the course is it does use her identify, confirm, and evaluate. So she kind of goes in and um, just shows you how the exact process that she uses. It's also a six, it comes with her six point trader checklist. It includes a course manual. Uh, of course, the, the, the uh, class is online and it streams and you can kind of view that as your thing. 
if you're one of those 50 percent that don't have metastock will give you free access to metastock as part of it and it's going to include all of those templates and setups and the things that we design specifically for the course as part of it's going to include them there's no additional cost it's not like buying an add-on it's just included you get everything you need to go ahead and get started with it so the cost for it is really cheap it's two hundred dollars for the course you're going to get a discount offer of 139 and i'd really encourage you to try it out it's something that obviously tony has been in the market for a long time she knows what she's talking about if you're as impressed as I am with the class that she just given, then you're going to be very, very happy in it. So that's it for me. If you have questions or you want to kind of look at the video um, that kind of goes into a little bit more detail on the meta stock side of the tools before you kind of make a decision, uh, let me know. Uh, I'm going to give you my email address here. Let me just go ahead and stop sharing that. Uh, my email address is, let's do this, J E F F R E Y. Dot Gibby at metastock.com and I can send you the little training video that talks about the actual course itself. The link to go to the class is Tony, uh, well, it's right there. Just click on it. It's a little bit of a longer link like Tony said, but just go ahead and click on it. Uh, Michael, you're going to ask a question. Go for it. I'll wait around for, for the, to give you the answer. And I would recommend you go to the class. So, um, well, okay. Uh, with that being said, I want to thank everybody for coming today. I want to thank Tony for her first presentation. You did a great job, Tony. We really appreciate it. And um, let's go ahead and see. We see some questions coming in. If you have some questions that we can answer, go ahead and let me know. Uh, John asks, will this work with the Metastock 11? Um, actually, it will not. Um, the, the, the stuff that we designed for Meta Tony Turner will not. Actually, the dynamic trend stuff will, because that's actually been in Metastock for a while, so the automatic support and resistance level stuff will. But you're going to get a free trial to Metastock 13, and I think uh, once you try it out, you're going you're gonna to really, really like it. Uh, there's no fee for the add-on. It's included with the course, Henry. So, you know, normally if you bought an add-on from us, it would cost you about two, three hundred bucks. This is a very good add-on. We also leveraged some stuff that were, was already in the program that was maybe a little bit less popular. But at 130 bucks, you get Metastock, you get all the training, and you get all of the custom-built scans that we built for Tony. So it's a, it's a fantastic deal. All right, cool. Thanks for coming, everybody. I can't, I'm not going to comment on Facebook. <laughs> uh, I appreciate your time. Actually, I, I probably uh, would not be um, too qualified to, to talk about Facebook, but the Dow just dropped like crazy today. All right, guys, I really appreciate your time. Uh, we'll see you at the next webinar, and thanks for coming in today.